Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be showing you how I got this look using the entire Scott Barnes new palette collection. So I did purchase all five of his palettes that he recently released. They've been sitting in my room, but I purchased them pretty quickly. I've been so eager to play with these and this is the look that I came up with. So we have the contour and sculpt palette, the snatural eyeshadow palette, the color bomb eyeshadow palette, the chic cheek blush palette, and the glowy and showy highlight palette all being demoed today for you guys and played with and talked about. So if you want to hear my thoughts on these, then just keep watching. Before I get into the video, let me just say that this is my first impressions. Normally, I don't prefer to do these styles of videos. I prefer to do in-depth reviews, but there's just so many palettes, so many different colors to play with that I really just thought the best thing was to do a first impressions. Let me know if you guys would like me to do an updated video using these palettes after I've played with the colors and telling you my thoughts and the best ways to use them. I think that would be a really good idea because these palettes are just so unique and very interesting. But anyways, here are my first impressions. Just be prepared prepared to see me looking like a ghost. All right, let's get into it. So as far as the shipping goes, I personally didn't have any issues. It didn't take an excessive amount of time to get to my house. They've been sitting in my room because I have not had time to film, but I did definitely get them in a timely manner. When you open up the palettes, each of them are going to come in this plastic bag that you open and it's like a Ziploc bag. Am I the only one that keeps stuff like this? Like I keep it for a few months and then when I go to cleanse my beauty area I will throw them away so who knows how long these will be sitting on my floor but I do kind of like these bags I think they're cute so the first palette that I want to play with is the sculpting and contour palette right over here so this is $58 and currently it looks like it is sold out online now this palette says it has a strong understanding of all skin types and shades with minimum fallout and high color payoff being blending friendly so it comes in this unicarton kind of simple and then the packaging itself is scott barnes i'm not gonna lie when i first saw it i kind of thought it looked cheap but honestly just like having all of these palettes all together i actually think the packaging is quite nice now 58 dollars is quite Quite pricey and on the back it looks like this is made in PRC it has the Scott Barnes information as to where you can follow him and total weight is 0.875 ounces or 24.8 grams so this one it has a flap and you have a mirror and you open it up and here are the colors as you can see I've kind of played a little bit now this palette for me I feel like out of all of them could potentially be the most intimidating because this doesn't look like your traditional sculpt palette. They all do have a matte finish, but the undertones of these are kind of across the board. You have like a little bit more yellowy warm. You have a reddish shade. You have some very cool tones, but I just feel like from just like a makeup user standpoint and not a makeup artist standpoint that this can be very confusing for the average person or a little bit more overwhelming just because you don't know what to do with the colors. From more of a makeup artist standpoint, I would say this is absolutely wonderful for a very large range of skin tones. So I think this palette is going to work very well for a lot of people now if you're just a makeup lover are you going to use every shade in here they're browns so you can use them for the eyes and you really actually can use all of these but as far as sculpting the face uh, you aren't probably going to use most of these colors. One thing I would like to note though is don't let these types of colors and tones scare you. A lot of times with weird sculpting colors, you'd be surprised at how they show up on the face. It just looks more different. Hashtag shade right here is a little bit more red. I feel like this is almost like a blush tone, especially for like more medium to deep skin tones. He used it on Tati as the like jawline contour, so I'm gonna try that today, but I feel like this is good to blend into blush or even be a blush. I feel like sliced might be good to warm up the face. Snatched is a very dark contour color that I'm intimidated to use, but I think for me the colors that I would lean towards are like these two and this one right here. So we are just going to play. Obviously I'm going to need to use this for a longer period of time. So I think I'm going to start off with a little bit of sliced right here. This one I think is the most unique looking kind of color and 
let's just see oh by the way as my base i am using the dior forever this is the old formula and i did not set my face with powder this foundation kind of dries down to a more powdery finish anyways and it's winter and i have dry skin yeah so this particular shade is not overly pigmented this is the refer number five brush by the way i love this for more bronzing shades yeah so this as you can see it added a little bit of shade a little bit of color i like it it definitely in my opinion looks better uh, i would definitely say this is less intense intimidating on the skin than it looks in the pan. I'm not a master sculptor like Scott Barnes. Normally, I just prefer a diffused kind of deepness on the outsides of my face, but never to actually really sculpt. Let's go a little bit deeper. So this shade looks a little bit more warm. This is chiseled, but I think this might be like a good bronze shade for more medium skin tones. And I'm just gonna really hit the outer areas. I'm using a very, very light hand. I mean, it's blending very well. These colors definitely, as I suspected, are less intimidating on the face. Okay, so I feel like this is like kind of like a nice bronzer. Uh, it's a little bit more warmth to my face. Really pretty. Now we're going to take some of shade. This is the Isom X52. And I'm going to try this below the jawline. It's not something I would typically think to use. Ooh. That's got a lot of color. Use it on Tati and it looked good, but I also don't look like Tati, so. So, <laughs> I went a little heavy here. Uh, so let me take my sponge and kind of sponge that in. This shade is definitely very pigmented, but I don't think it's like a weird color to have in a contour palette because I think you can really blend it into some blush really nicely. Uh, as far as the kind of under jaw color, I mean it works definitely, but don't think it's a bad color at all. Especially if you're like sunburned, this actually might be a really good color to match down with your chest. Okay, so let's just use one more color to kind of chisel the face a bit more. I'm going to mix carve and diced right here because these ones are more cool tone and i'm gonna hit right underneath do you guys see that really nice carving colors and again my gosh it's six o'clock already on a sunday where has the time gone okay i know i feel like i've spent 10 minutes contouring but let's do the nose really quickly i'm not a big nose contour but we're gonna take some of diced i'm using this refer p073 brush and for the sake of the video my nose is weird I'm not a good nose contour, and I feel like I just made myself look so dirty. Listen, I'm just not a big nose contour, so we're just going to pretend that never happened. And let's take some of Frame. And we're going to do that thing he does around the lips. This might make me look like I ate dirt, so sorry in advance. We're going to do like a subtle version of it, though. Because he really goes in, and I'm too scared to do that. So that added a nice shadow there. Now I'm about to really look like I have a mustache or something weird. Huh. You know? I didn't do it as intense as he did on Tati. I just used kind of like a fluffy blending brush. But I feel like my lips look fuller. Hmm. Okay. So... <laughs> Final thoughts on this palette. Uh, so far, I like it. I think it's definitely going to take some playing around to see what I think of each color and the best uses for it. But quality-wise, I didn't have any problems with blending. I feel like everything looks very nice on my face that I used, and I can see why this is sold out. It's kind of a Scott Barnes shtick. I was hoping, though, that this would be cream because I feel like he made cream contour a real big trend again when he originally used it on Tati. He only used like cream contour, so that would have been really neat to see a cream contour palette from him. But I do like the powder as well. I don't necessarily know that maybe this is for like an everyday makeup wear. I think it's definitely more suited towards makeup artists, but it is fun. It's really fun to play around. So let's move on to the next palette. Finally, I know, I'm sorry. So we're actually going to go straight into the eyeshadow palettes so that I can match the blush and highlight to the look. There are two eyeshadow palettes that he came out with and this one I believe is probably the most popular. This is the Snatural eyeshadow palette now. 
This is $84. The sleeve is really, really neat. And then you have the Scott Barnes, 0.88 ounces, 25 grams. And you open it up and hello, these tones are absolutely stunning. Definitely Scott Barnes right over here super glam colors but still super neutral and then let me show you the other one also 84 dollars this is the color bomb palette this is the sleeve it comes in so the snatural says eyeshadow palette on the back the color bomb says pigment palette on the back and they're the same packaging just different unicartons and this one is so fun and I cannot wait to play with this. The finishes on here look stunning. So we're going to swatch a little bit. I can't use all of these colors in one look. Let's play with the color bomb because I'm going to use this natural because I feel like I can really test the quality of those colors. But let me know if you want to see like a separate video on this palette just doing a couple looks or something because I'm very intrigued. Let's swatch. We're going to start off with vibes right here. I'm not a very good swatcher so just bear with me. Okay, so that one felt nice. Uh, I just completely swatched crooked. Okay, this one is paparazzi. Ooh, really pretty. Not overly pigmented. I don't know if you can see. It's hard to pick up on camera, but it's a really pretty glittery shade. First class right here. So these colors are coming off a little bit more sheer. I wouldn't say they are packed with pigment, but I think it's definitely about the finish on here. This is Peacock. Oh my. How stunning is that? Old Money. This one feels like more of a shimmer shade and not this like really pretty glitter formula. Oof. Not like the creamiest formula, but it feels quite nice. That color is stunning. Let's do New Fling. This is a matte. We're gonna just do it up here. Okay, some of teas. <sighs> okay, yeah, so these are swatching so pretty. So from what I can tell from this palette, you have a lot of different finishes in here. You're going to get a lot of dimension from your looks. The shadows themselves feel pretty nice. I wouldn't say they're the most like pigmented or creamy formula, but that's not always a bad thing. So I'm going to insert some external swatches here from playing around just so you can see the colors and a note about how I noticed they all swatch for me. You know we have to do snatural because these colors right here are absolutely everything and I'm such a sucker for neutral looks. For my eye base, I have a little bit of concealer on and now I'm going to layer on some of my MAC Paint Pot right here in Painterly. So as I'm applying this, here are the swatches of the entire palette and a note about how they swatched in my experience with that, but of course, it's all about the eyes, so we are about to test how they apply out on the eyes. No idea what direction I'm going here, but we're going to start off with Vintage right here. This seems to be a really light transition color. I'm using an Isum G34 in case you were curious. We're going to do this as the initial transition shade. Very nice. <laughs> it did the job. We're going to see how these build in layers. So we're going to take Risqué right here a little bit deeper. This has some warmth to it. Not overly pigmented, which is not a bad thing at all because it's really about how they build, not necessarily how they apply right away and how much pigment they apply right away. The buildability and blendability are what is most important for me. Okay, so we're taking a MAC 224. We're going to start building into Foxy right here. So this look right now that I'm doing is just about slowly building and blending these layers. Woody. So far, these shadows are building quite seamlessly. So we're going to take one of the darkest colors. This is black, but not quite. It's a really dark charco charcoaly brown. And I'm going to pop that right lower over here. By the way, I have little to no fallout. And then I'm going to take just a touch of Sin, which is the black. And we are going to focus 
the tiniest bit, almost just like a dot. And really quickly, I'm just going to work a couple of those browns down here, kind of just mixing them all together. So this is a look, I promise you it's going to come together, but let's play with some of these shimmers. So we're gonna do some of Saucy right here. We're gonna go more warm today and this feels really buttery. Okay, yes. So they definitely, the shimmers in here have a little bit of like thickness to them, like you can feel them. It's not a bad thing at all, it's just, I don't know if you guys have noticed, it's just if you're familiar with a lot of different eyeshadow textures, some are more thin, this one isn't, it's a little bit more thick. And I'm gonna play with Siren right here because this one has a little bit more gleam and immediately to the touch it feels thinner. So their shimmer formula right here is like thicker and this like kind of glazed topper metallic shade is definitely much more thin and I'm gonna place this right on top just to see what it adds to the look. It definitely adds some more brightness to that color and a little bit more dimension to the eye. Let's try Siren Wet. It's just mm. much more foiled effect when the brush is wet. So I'm going to just clean everything up, do some liner and lashes, and we'll be back to finish the rest of the face. All right, I'm back. This look definitely turned out a lot more like grungy than I had anticipated, but I love it. It's super smoky. As far as the eyeshadow quality goes, what I really like about it is that they aren't overly pigmented, so it isn't a scary palette to use. They blend very easily and they build very easily. And from a makeup artist standpoint, uh, I personally prefer that. I think it just makes colors a lot more easy to work with. And especially just from a makeup enthusiast standpoint, I always have been very big on eyeshadows, especially mattes that are buildable because it's easier to work with and I think these shadows do a really great job of that. The shimmers aren't overly pigmented either. That can be a good or bad thing, but I like that they're not too wet. Normally that gives them a longer lifetime as well, but they work very good. So, so far I really like the eyeshadows. I really like the look I created and it was super easy. So I think quality wise that these shadows are great for a lot of different people. So this next palette I'm talking about is one that I was actually super excited for. I probably was the most excited about this. This is the Chic Cheek Blush Palette. This is $58 and really cute hot pink packaging and one thing that I want to note right away is that the colors online look a lot more scary than they are in person. So yeah, I definitely think it's a lot more toned down. So here you have kind of two amplifiers and then you have six matte shades so basically scott barnes said that he really likes to build and blend and mix these shades i think just because of the look i have we're going to keep it pretty simple i actually will mix though strike a rose and crush and blush because i feel like these tones go very well with my look but from what i can tell these shades look the most intimidating but I've seen a lot of people put it on and it blends out really beautiful and looks really nice on people so don't be afraid of those shades just from watching other videos it seems that these are all pretty friendly to everybody so I'm mixing those two shades that I just pointed out putting them right on the apple beautiful I mean I'm such a blush enthusiast and from what I can tell this is really, really nice. It's blending out. It's buildable, blendable, and it looks like it's going to be really fantastic for a lot of different skin tones. So, so far I'm liking it. I do want to kind of tone it down a little bit. Kind of push it into the skin with my sponge. Okay, and I'm going to try one of these amplifiers. We have a whole highlighting palette, but let's just take a little bit of the peach one and put it right on top just for a little bit of a glow. I very lightly just pressed in like twice. Okay, yeah, so I like that you have the ability to make it like a shiny blush. Uh, it is showing a little bit of texture and definitely the color seems a little bit more highlighty rather than just adding a sheen. So be aware of that. So it is going to show your texture, especially if you have a lot more pores. So I think if it were up to me, I would prefer that to be more of like a satin finish rather than a highlighty finish. But at the same time, you can just use that as a regular 
highlight and it would be fine. Of course, want to play with a lot more of those colors, but from what I can tell, I really like the colors in there. I like the concept and no problems with the quality. So let's move on to the glowy and showy highlighter palette. This is $68. It's 10 more compared to the other face palette. So I'm assuming it has to do with the formula. This is what the unicarton is looking like and you pull it out and holographic Scott Barnes. I don't know that I love this packaging, but I still like it. But this is quite easy on the eyes. It looks like I'm going to be beaming like from space, like you would be able to see me from space. I'm not always down for a highlight like that. I'm not going to lie. I think generally speaking, I prefer a more subtle highlight and I I just don't think that's what this is. But let's see. Um I want to apply some to my inner corner too. I'm going to take some of Pink Crush. Let's just very nice, okay. All right, let me stop playing. Let's do candlelight. I think I like the looks of this. I am very lightly dipping into... Okay, so me being scared of super blinding highlights, I need like one dip and then really to blend it out because this, as you can see, it's not the brightest of the highlights. Okay, let's try Sugar Rush. Ooh. Okay, if you don't like a blending highlight, run far away from this palette. I just did into Pink Crush. We're gonna put that right here. A little bit right here. I see, I see, I see. Okay, I'm, so from what I can tell from this formula, based on my first experience, I like it a lot. It is a lot. So if you don't like blinding, this is not for you, but if you like blinding, really nice. I do notice it emphasizing a little bit of texture, but honestly, I really love the way that it blends into the skin. It actually looks quite seamless. I just look unnaturally glowy, but it's seamless into the skin and the reflection is stunning. This is like great for a night out or if you just like a really blinding highlight. Great selection of colors for a lot of different skin tones. I know for me, just being a lighter skin tone, I was a tad concerned that like this whole half wasn't going to work for me, which is not a bad thing because I feel as though this is better suited towards a makeup artist, but I do have light skin and I definitely can use up to here. So I really like this, but it's definitely very blinding. I don't know that once you put them on, all the colors kind of stand out individually. Like I just blended a bunch together and I didn't notice too much of a difference between the colors, but I mean, it's really nice. So I'm going to put on some lips and give you my final thoughts about all of these palettes. All right, so here is the final look using all of these Scott Barnes products. So quickly, let me give you my last kind of final closing thoughts on these palettes. So we're gonna start off with the Sculpting and Contour. I think this one is a really fun palette. I'm actually more excited about it now than I was originally before because I feel like there's a lot of fun different tones that I'm so excited to experiment with just to see what it really does to my face and what it adds and what it takes away. So I think this is a very unique contour palette. I feel like for a while when contour palettes were very popular, it kind of got boring and repetitive. I think this is a really fun take and I think this is fantastic for makeup artists because you do get so many different tones. I don't necessarily know it's for everybody, but I do like it. I think it's really fun and the quality quite good. As far as the eyeshadow palettes go, the color bomb I will have to keep you updated on. I do need to play with this guy because I haven't even put it on my eyes. So let me know if you would be interested in me going more in depth into that one because everybody has covered this natural, but how could you not? It's just colors that you're going to use. I love the blendability of this palette. I love the buildability. It's pretty foolproof. Uh, it just makes applying eyeshadows really easy. So it is a very good formula. And the colors in this natural in particular, so many people are going to love. This is a great palette for a makeup kit. It's just, this is a very trendy color scheme and a lot of you guys are gonna like it. 
$85 is up there, but it definitely works extremely well. And it's a great palette to travel with. It just has all of the colors you need. So I'm really liking it. You can go from everyday daytime very easily to a really deep, fun, smoky eye. So looking forward to continuing using that. I also think the blush palette is extremely fun. I think you can really play with different tones. The formula is buildable as well. So if you want a really light flush that's easy to do, but it's also easy to build it up, I think this is great for a lot of different skin tones. I like how you have the amplifiers in here. They're more so just highlights if you ask me, but you can kind of put them all over the cheek to give you an added glow. I'm a huge blush lover. So for me, this is probably my favorite of the face palettes, but this this is a good blush palette. And lastly, the showy and glowy highlight palette. This is the one I'm probably the least excited about just because I like a more subtle highlight, generally speaking. But I mean, it's Scott Barnes. This is his shtick. This is what he does. And I think he did a very nice job with it. It is a very bright and beaming formula. Really pretty to look at. So if you like highlight, you will really enjoy this palette. So I mean, overall, I don't have anything bad to say about these palettes. I don't necessarily know that all of them are a necessity for everybody, but whether you're a makeup artist or a makeup lover, they're really fun to have, especially if you're a makeup artist. I actually think these are great to have in your collection because the quality is really nice and you get a great array of colors. They were created by Scott Barnes. It's what he does, it's what he's famous for. So I think he did a really great job from a makeup artist standpoint. And and I still think he made them really fun and exciting for makeup lovers and enthusiasts as well. Like these are a fun item to have in your collection and he did a great job with the formula and that is all I can ask. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you would like me to do more videos with these palettes or if you want like an update after I've used them for a longer period of time because there are so many colors that I didn't get to use and experiment with. This was all first impressions. I don't know, these are just a fun release. It was super fun to talk about these. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, I sure do hope you take the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.